This world has been connected, tied to the darkness, soon to be completely eclipsed. Hello there, Sarah from 17 once again. This is my Kingdom Hearts final mix, Proud Difficulty video walkthrough. We're about to fight Maleficent and the dragon, which... Maleficent is easy, she's really easy in fact. The dragon is not. The dragon is so bad. It's, it's, it's one of those things where I remember it when I was a kid, or when I was younger, sorry. And I remember it being really tough because she constantly attacks all the time. And her attacks when she does the stomps and when she does the fire breath, they have a massive radius. And the only way to damage this boss is to hit its face. And to hit its face, you have to put yourself in the range of its attacks. And for a boss that constantly attacks, is constantly doing damage, it's a really tough fight. And I saw a video on, on YouTube of a dude who did it no damage on Proud. And it's some of just the most amazing footage I've seen on Kingdom Hearts. It's, it's a guy who has a, a, a serious mastery of this channel. And I can't remember his name, but I'm sure if you, if you search, you know, Proud Dragon, you'll probably get it. And the guy is brilliant, he's amazing. And I think he says in his description of something that Kingdom Hearts is his favourite game, so you can tell he loves the game because he's really good at it. But I could not fucking no damage that dragon. If I was here for the next year, I'd probably still be unable to do it because it's a measure of patience that I don't have. Like My strategy with it is to get in, do a bit of damage, get out, you know, heal any any wounds, refill the MP, and then go back in. And Another strategy that's really useful is to, to kind of just let the team beat it up. But they die so quickly on Proud that it takes ages. So you have this, this kind of decision that you want to make where you can either make the fight last 40 minutes and do it the easy way where you let your team beat her up and you just kind of keep healing them, keep buffing them, and keep Sora alive. Or you do quite some damage and then when you're struggling you let your team do some damage and vice versa and my fight is going to be an example of that where I try to do a little bit to damage Maleficent to speed it up but then when I start to struggle I pull out I let the team do some work and I'm going to speed those sections up because the AI is terrible the AI is so thick so just headstrong they just stand there and let the boss smash them and the boss does so much damage that they can barely stand but just get ready for a, a brick wall of difficulty if you've never fought this boss and one of the options is of course to spam items, spam heals and then just kind of tank your way through another option is to farm some levels level yourself up so that you can take the damage a little bit better and you can deal it a little bit more but for the purpose of this walkthrough I wanted it to be as honest and as you know as streamlined as possible so I did neither of those things and instead I have a really messy and brutal fight against the dragon which in its honesty makes it more entertaining but there are probably much better ways of doing it if you're stronger and if you're, you're more patient and more strategic which are two things that I really wasn't during that fight but a little bit of puzzle solving here a little bit of hitting the platforms and what have you and I, I'm not too sure why I've been so specific with my editing on this guide a lot of the, the levels have bosses involved in them when I usually try and separate the bosses for the people who want them and nothing else so that they can find the bosses, watch it and have exactly what they need. But on this particular guide, I don't know if I'm looking to, you know, to just make it more, to make it shorter and less videos, I've put them together in with the levels which makes it a little bit more difficult for people to find. So an interesting decision which I can't remember the justification of. Let's look for some enemies and let's look at some stats we're taking on wizards which I really don't like that enemy it's such an annoying enemy I don't like the dark balls as well because they have a tendency to hit you off camera which is something that should never happen but Maleficent so a little bit of history on Maleficent for you here the evil witch is not only an expert sorceress she is also mistress of the heartless although Maleficent appears to be responsible for the loss of countless worlds nobody seems to know what ultimately drives her she first displayed her pro propensity for malice in the 1959 animated feature film, Disney's Sleeping Beauty. 1959, Jesus. And she's still just as badass as she was then. But her HP is 900. 
You get 6,000 experience from killing her, and her strength and defense are pretty standard. It says in the book that Maleficent fights this battle from a hovering platform, which is right. You jump up and strike the witch from behind. Uh, direction doesn't really matter so much. If the platform hovers beyond your reach, strike it from below until it descends. When you hear Malevolent conjuring the meteors of heaven, quickly run towards the outer walls of the chapel to avoid their impact. Maleficent regular summons Dark Balls and Defenders, or they are not your primary opponents. Defeated Dark Balls drop HP Balls, and, def and while Defenders leave behind MP Balls. So, pretty simple stuff. And I'm getting ready for it now. So as you can see, I haven't really showed you much of this because I've edited it out, but this is me stocking my team with items because I know what's coming. And one thing you need to be aware of, when you give your team items, they will use them. My god will they use them. They use them all the time. It's, it's obnoxious. And it's something that they fixed in Kingdom Hearts 2 because they allowed you to really go in there and, and moderate what they did. And there's a little bit of that in this game, but I don't think they... They understood just how whorish the AI is on items. And they're the computer, so as soon as they hit that priority where the items are able to be used, they use them. And it is pretty brutal. But I don't know here if I'd recommend Beast or, or Donald. I think I prefer Beast just because he's stronger. And he's going to be much more handy than Donald in the dragon fight because Donald's going to die. And he's going to die a lot. But you can see my timer as well, 11 hours, 27 minutes. So if you're anywhere under that, which is more than possible to do, you are well on your way to getting the Speedster Trophy. If you're a little bit over it, then I would recommend to try and be as, as, as swift as you can be. But here is Maleficent. And I have Ars Arcanum, so it would seem. So, here comes Ars Arcanum. You'll notice she's lifting up her spear, she's gonna do a swing. You, she telegraphs every move that she's going to do. The one you want to watch is when she holds it with two hands and she goes to stamp it in the ground. And my strategy is simple. Just bum her with Ars Arcanum. Get on the platform, deal some serious damage. As soon as you're out of MP, bring your MP back with items and then get back on there and dump her some more with Ars Arcanum. And it's, it's kind of funny coming back after playing Chain of Memories to watch this just to see, you know, how different these games play. Now, this particular move here, you can get close to Maleficent, but it does some wicked damage. So I decided to just keep a bit of distance and wait for it to wear off. As soon as it wears off, uh, she does a little laugh and she's going to teleport away. And I don't think you can jump on it just yet. You have to attack it to get it down. So space yourself from the Heartless and then start killing her. There's the life bar, which means it can be destroyed. She goes and gets back over there. It's got a lot of life, the... the piece of concrete or whatever the hell she's on the platform but as soon as it goes down she's dead because we've got enough Ars Arcanum to to blister her with or do we oh interrupts it ouch so there you go she starts casting meteor I hit her with Ars Arcanum I've got enough to do one more and it should kill her or maybe I don't I thought it was two MP Ars Arcanum strange maybe it's because I don't have the gold band on them we're still in a good position here, so we should be okay. There goes the, the shield back on the, the platform. And just be aware that the defenders do some serious damage. I died on this fight because I came out of an air combo into a double swing, which effectively murdered me. So just, just be aware that this is proud difficulty and things can hurt. But the game is definitely easier the further in you get, minus the dragon boss. The dragon boss is bullshit and hard and... So testing. Which is a shame, because this fight's really fun. And I think if the dragon just, you know, had a little bit more cooldown on its attacks and didn't cause the the earthquakes when it, when it moved its legs, I think it'd be a really fun and really good fight. But as it stands, it's a nightmare. An absolute nightmare. And you're about to see it, because after this fight will be the dragon fight. So let's talk stats. The dragon has 1200 life on the regular game. It gives you 6000 experience. And let's see what the, the book says how to fight it. So the best position for you to take up during the battle with the dragon is the outer perimeter of the area. You will rarely be struck when you are near the tree trunk. I don't know why I said that weird. 
Tag your opponent and cast fire spells, while pressing triangle causing your party members to attack. Unfortunately this approach is time consuming and it requires a great number of ethers, so it does have a strategy in here which is similar to the one I've always used. You can recover a few MP by running up to the dragon and striking its head from the side while jumping. This prevents you from being hit by its Fireaga breath. Avoid the shockwaves emitted when your opponent rears up and stamps the ground. As with other bosses, it is a good idea to summon Tinkerbell at the outset. Following your victory, you receive Fire Glow. Interesting. Which is a fairy godmother summon. So there's a lot of good strategy that it's just told you there. But on proud mode, it's even tougher. And I do think I summoned Tinkerbell during this fight when I go in for the kill. But it's been a while since I recorded this guy, so I can't quite remember. What I did try, if you're wondering... I tried strike raids, I tried whoring it because you get the iframes. Biggest problem with whoring strike raid is it misses. It misses the dragon's extremely evasive. Um, here is the, the boss anyhow. So I tried stopping his face and then hitting him. But there's the, the, the main like stomp attack. That attack is easy to evade and punish. That isn't. That is just his movement fucking AoE, which is bullshit, man. The fire attack does massive damage and is tricky to avoid unless you're at the left or right of him. And just, just look. It attacks constantly. Always attacking. It's moving, it's stomping. It's biting, it's causing fire breath. It's... This is one of the hardest bosses I think I've ever fought. For the game it's in. Because... For instance, if this was Ninja Gaiden, or if this was, you know, something like Metal Gear Rising, Devil May Cry, pick your favourite action game, insert its name, then this boss would be doable. But this is not those games. This is a game where the only iframes you have are tied to abilities that cost MP. And you are not invulnerable when you're restoring MP, so you can't just infinitely spam that shit. This is a game where you can't cancel out of attacks. And uh, this is the sped up moments when I'm just letting my team beat him up. Fantastic music when it's sped up as well. It's like some crazy children of boredom keyboard. <laughs> but this game just doesn't have the the precision to do this without some serious skill and patience. Like, I'm using stop, and this is just annoying, this spell, because you get chased by a bunch of green bullshit that does really big damage. So, rolling around will evade it. You can also guard against it if you want to. But you'll notice both my team has just been revived because they were dead. And there's the spin attack that also has a ground shockwave. Like, why does this boss have so many things that kill you? Like, I, I'm, I'm calling it right now here, folks. I think, personally, this boss is harder than any boss in this game. He's harder than Sephiroth. He's harder than the Unknown guy. He's harder than the last boss. Ice Titan. All of them. Because it's just... It never, ever gives you space. Like, to, to hurt it, you have to put yourself in danger. When you're in danger, you're in the most danger you've ever been in. Like, a lot of people think Sephiroth is this hardest, amazing fight, because he's so challenging and things. What Sephiroth is, is a guy who has mass range, really high damage, and a lot of life. He has an ability that drains your life and your MP, but aside from that, he doesn't really do that much that you haven't seen before. He's just this intimidating figure that once you learn that Strike Raid is extremely powerful and you can't take damage, he becomes easy. Strike Raid doesn't work on this. This boss is, is brutal. But you can do this for the full duration. Get your team to attack and what have you. Spam Y to... Oh, spam Triangle, sorry. To, you know, make them attack and things. But they're both dead. And I don't want to waste magic reviving them too much because I don't have that, that much. And it's getting towards the end of the fight here. But uh, what I'm doing at that moment is when the fire, when he does the one that locks onto you, those crazy fireballs, I start spamming guard to try and get tech bonuses on them. Occasionally you'll get hit. It seems quite luck based. You'll notice I'm doing it a lot, like, please don't hit me. Stupid fireballs. But there you go. A bit more spamming. And just be aware that you're in for quite a long fight if you're going to try and do what I'm doing here. Which I already know, guys, it's very cowardly, but. This fight is hard. This fight is really tough. And I notice he's getting quite low on life, so I'm probably going to throw an elixir on me and summon Tinkerbell. And then just go in there and try and kill it. Because what Tinkerbell does is she constantly heals you. And if you die while you have her summoned, she'll disappear and it'll revive you. 
Or maybe I won't, because the boss is nearly dead. What am I doing? Am I going to get the finishing blow? I'm waiting. Here we go. I'm going in. Going in to get that finishing blow and end this goddamn boss fight. And there is the dragon. Not the most graceful strategy, but it will work. And good luck on anybody trying to get through that fight, because it is, it's not fun. It really isn't. Thank you for watching. You take care now.